Hello everyone and welcome back. We've got another off-season preview video here to discuss looking at the St. Louis Blues and the Philadelphia Flyers. We'll be looking at how they both missed the playoffs this year. We'll look at the RFAs, UFAs, and draft capital for the coming season. And look at how they can get back to the playoffs next year with the moves in the off-season. We'll get to all that coming up right now. Hello everyone, welcome back to the talk show. Now before we get this video, don't forget to like this video and subscribe down below. Thank you all for your support and everyone to all of you guys. So if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe button down below and don't forget to leave a comment down in the comment section below so we can all discuss in today's video. Now, as usual, we're going to do another off-season preview video here to discuss. Uh, today we're discussing the St. Louis Blues and the Philadelphia Flyers, the 13th and 14th teams eliminated from the playoff contention this year. Now, both these teams are really good. They're really close. For the Flyers, they were in a playoff spot for most of this year. For the Blues, they actually held down a playoff spot for quite some time, had a couple of really good runs a little while ago, uh, but both those teams do wind up missing. Uh, Philly wound up having a little bit of a sour stretch, fell out of the playoffs, got eliminated just a few days before the playoffs started. Blues, about a week before the playoffs started, they got eliminated, uh, weren't able to catch up to the Golden Knights after falling out a little bit, so both teams were in really good positions at various points this year, but they both do wind up missing, so they're both not going to be playoff teams this year, which is really bad news for both the Blues and the Flyers. So we'll see what happens with both these teams and how they can improve in the offseason. So we'll start with the thingless Blues, as they were the first the two eliminated so three reasons in my opinion as to why this Blues team wound up uh, missing the playoffs first their offense took a hit as much as they had some pretty good uh, goal scoring especially from their top guys like Cairo, Thomas, Buchnevich who all had pretty fantastic seasons uh, their depth scoring was not overly great I mean there were a couple of guys like Jake Neighbors for instance Brandon Sal was actually quite good this year some of their defensemen have actually been pretty good this year but they didn't have a really good offensive team and they were one of the lower teams in the standings when it came to goal scoring so I think that's one of the reasons why this Blues team did one up missing and low goal scoring was just not good enough for the Blues to get it done to make the playoffs. Another one was the no changes to the blue line. I think in the offseason, after last year and the way this Blues team did not do overly well with their blue line, I thought there was going to be some changes in that Blues team. I thought they would be a little bit of a, a more different team coming into this year, but they didn't make any change in the blue line. They still had guys like Krug, Fall, Kletty, Pareko, uh, Peronovic on their team. So I was a little bit worried, and that's one of the reasons why I put them so low when I was predicting them to only hit around 500 mark this year. They did a lot better than I thought they would have done uh, when it came to point-wise, but still, that defense, I think, does have a, a reason to blame for how they did so badly this year it's not an overly great blue line and I do think changes will be coming this offseason to that blue line to try and make it a little bit more better so I have to wait and see exactly what happens there but I definitely think the blue line had something to do with this on top of that they are an older team as much as they do have a couple of younger pieces like Cairo like Thomas uh, they incorporate neighbors into the lineup this year they're still a majority of an older team I mean, most of their defensemen are up there into their late 20s or early 30s there's a lot of forwards like Saad like Shen uh, Buchnevich is almost 30 uh, so there's going to be a lot of players on that team who are a little bit more older than some of the other teams and I think that's another reason as to why it is they're an older more slower team as much as they were able to do quite well this year and they get really close to a playoff spot I think that the older slower team is just it wasn't able to help them get to the playoffs this year so definitely do think that the Blues being an older slower team. Uh, no change to the blue line this offseason. Led them to having the exact same defense this year compared to how we were last year. And the offense that took a hit with not as much goal scoring this year were all reasons as to why this Blues team wound up missing the playoffs. So those are my reasons as to why this Blues team wound up missing this year. Going over to uh, significant pending UFAs, RFAs, and the team's draft capital for this offseason. Now if you look at the UFAs, there's not a whole bunch of players here on the UFA side of things. You have Kasperi Kapanen who had 6 goals this year, 22 points in 73 games. It was a decent middle 6 4 but not someone who's, I think, going to be back with the Blues. I mean, he was uh, brought in, given a chance to after being claimed off waivers like Pittsburgh last year, and he, he worked out all right. He's not everyday NHL forward anymore, so I definitely think he'll probably leave in the offseason. You also have uh, Blay and Verana. Blay had 7 points in 53 games. Verana, 6 points in 21 games. Neither one has worked over well. Verana was buried in the minors. Blay was a healthy scratcher at various points of this year, so I would expect both those guys to probably get moved on in the offseason by the Blues. You also have Marco Scandella, who played in 65 games this year, had 8 points. He's a decent third pair of defensemen. He's actually worked quite well for the Blues over the past couple of years, but same sort of thing. I expect him to probably move on, so I wouldn't expect him to be back. And you also have Kelly Rosen, who has an assist in that six games. He's actually been a really good seventh, eighth defenseman over the past couple of years for St. Louis. However, same sort of thing. I could see him be brought back. He's probably one of the more likely ones on this list, but I do think there's a very likely chance he moves on too. So those are all the pending UFAs that are going to be there for the Blues. If you look at the RFAs for the Blues, not a whole bunch either. You only have two guys. You have Nikita Alexandrov, 
Love, who had two assists in 23 games, was a pretty good player, in my opinion, for the Blues team in like a bomb six role. And I think he could have a solid future, like a fourth line center for that team. So I probably expect him to be back. You also have Scott Peronovich, who had 17 assists in 54 games. That was another really good player, but Peronovich was fantastic. I'm not sure if they'll re-sign him and try to keep him as like a solid third, second pair of defensemen uh, long term for them, or if they'll potentially move him. There was some trade chatter around Peronovich's name uh, earlier in the year, so I do wonder if Peronovich does get talked about against possibly being moved, but I also wouldn't be surprised if the Blues resign him, so those are two pending RFAs this team has. If they look at their draft capital for this upcoming offseason, they have nine picks, which is fantastic for them. They have their own first round pick, theirs and the Leafs second round pick, theirs and the Rangers third round pick, their own fourth and fifth. They have no sixth, but then they also have theirs and the Islanders seventh, so they have no sixth round picks this year, but they do have an extra second, an extra third, and an extra seventh round pick for this upcoming offseason, so that's fantastic news for the Blues. And I will think they'll be able to use those picks to good use as they picking players who should be able to help them in the future or moving them for upgrades that they can make this offseason. So I'll try and see on that. And five ways I can see this Blues team improve in the offseason to get back to the playoffs next year. First, they need to figure out what to do with Bushnevich. Now, heading into their trade deadline, there was a lot of chair chatter around uh, Pavel Bushnevich. He was a potentially a guy who could have been moved. Now, he's going to be entering the final year of his deal this offseason. He's going to be eligible for an extension on July 1st. So I think they either need to sign him, keep him on this team because he will actually work quite well with guys like uh, Kairou and Thomas, so they either need to keep him around and keep him as a solid top six forward, or I think they should move him with him entering the final year of his deal and try and get the best return they can, because Buchnevich's value is sky high right now, so I think that's something they need to figure out. Do they move Buchnevich or do they keep him? Uh, they need to add a top four defenseman. Like I said, this defense needs to have some sort of change up. Uh, you can't go back into the, the next year with Pareko, Krug, Falk, and Letty as your top four. You just, you can't, so I think to add a top four defenseman, now whether that's a guy like Austin Spare or Tanev in the free agent markets or Yoki Haru or Gerard on the trade market. I do think they need to try and either trade for or sign a top four defenseman who can really work well in that defensive group, so we'll have to wait and see on that. Uh, also, they need to move a couple of players, I think. I think they need to consider moving Tori Krug again. Uh, they were trying to move him last year to Philadelphia. It never worked out. He uses no trade clause. Uh, blocked that trade, so I think they need to try and figure out a way if they can move him. Uh, Pareko's name has come up a lot over the past couple of years. I do wonder if the Blues consider moving him. Uh, you also got Brand Saad and Kevin Hayes. Those two are more veteran type top nine forwards. Saad's making four and a half million dollars. Hayes is making 3.7 I think million dollars for the next two seasons. So uh, I could definitely see Hayes or Saad be uh, moved. Saad's showed this year he can be a really good middle six forward. Hayes can be a really good second, third line center especially that cap hit. So I could definitely see the Blues try and make some sort of move there to try and improve their forward group. Try and move up one of those veteran pieces. Uh, also you got Krug and Pareko who I think could definitely be moved to try and make some changes on the blue line. So I'll also see exactly what happens there but I think they need to try and consider moving one of those four guys or potentially a couple of those four guys to try and make some changes. Uh, I think they need to add some more top nine forward help. Like we said, the team's offense wasn't where it needs to be. I think they could add some more forward help. They're getting guys like Kapanen off the roster, Blay Verona, so that's going to open up some roster space. You move a guy like Saad or Hayes, that opens up roster and cap space. So I definitely do think the Blues are going to make some moves this offseason to try and bring in some more top nine forward help, especially if they move Buchnevich, if they were to move on from him and they can't find a long-term extension. I definitely think there's a possibility there that they try and add top nine forward to help replace him. So I'm not trying to see exactly what happens there, but I would not be overly surprised. They went out try to get some top nine forwards like Perron or Fogel or Ushin on the forward group, or maybe even guys like Kuzmenko or Vertrano on the trade market. So I'll have to see on that. And lastly, I think they need to get it younger. They started doing that this year, adding neighbors. They have Thomas and Kairou. They're starting to become a younger team, but they're still not a younger team. So if they are keeping Peronovich, I think they need to extend him and give him a bigger role the next year. I think they need to give Tyler Tucker and Matt Kessel some more ice time on the defensive end. Uh, if you're looking at goaltending, they need to figure out if Hofer can be a really good goaltender for that team. Uh, if you're looking at the forward group, give Bull Duke some more NHL time. He got a little bit of NHL action this year. Give him a full season next year. Uh, give Zach Dean some NHL looks. There's a couple of other young guys on that forward group that I think the Blues really want to try and have. So that's why I see exactly what happens there for the Blues. But I think the getting younger is going to be a huge piece to the Blues to try and make the playoffs again next year. So that's my opinion on the Blues. Those are three reasons why I think they missed the playoffs. Those are pending UFAs, RFAs, and draft capital for the upcoming season. And these are five ways I can see a Blues team improve this year to get better for next year. And next, going over to the Philadelphia Flyers. Now for the Flyers, now I was expecting them to be a bad team this year. I was expecting them to be one of the bomb dwellers in the Eastern Conference, if not the bomb dweller in the Eastern Conference. Well, I was pleasantly surprised by that. The uh, Flyers and the John Tortorella did a really good job this year and were able to maintain third in the Metro for quite some time. But at the end of the season, they collapsed. They not do overly well. They fell out of the playoff spot by a couple of points and were never able to recover and gain over that. 
especially in their last game when they needed to be Washington regulation and lost in regulation. So it was a bad stuff there for Philadelphia. Uh, a lot of people did not like the way Philadelphia went around things. Instead of making the playoffs, they just missed the playoffs. Instead of having a top five pick and tanking this year, they're now going to have a low end pick and they're not even going to be able to jump up to first overall this year, even if they won a lottery. So that's bad news there for Philadelphia. But they did get some uh, experience for some of the younger players and that should help them along the road. So very good stuff there for Philly. Uh, three reasons why I think the Flyers missed the playoffs. Once again, that collapsed in late April and early March. I think they had lost like eight or nine straight games and they've been losing quite a bit since the uh, trade deadline. So that really post trade deadline collapse really hurt that Flyers team. And I think it was a major reason as to why this team missed the playoffs. They don't collapse. Maybe they don't make the playoffs. Maybe they uh, are able to stay around 500. They should be able to keep them in the playoff spot and are able to make the playoffs this year. But that collapse after the trade deadline just it really hurt that team. So that was a bad news thing there for Philadelphia. What was scoring problems? One of the worst scoring teams this year uh, in the NHL. They were not able to get uh, a lot of scoring contributions. Sure, they had a lot of guys who were really good scorers, like Tippett. Kachuri had a really good season this year. Farabee was actually quite good. Atkinson, who was in, was a pretty good player. So they had a lot of scoring contributions, but they were one of the lower teams in the scoring race. So that's really bad stuff there for Philadelphia. And if they could get more uh, production out of some of those other guys, like Paling or Kate, or even guys like Farabee or Tippett could have gotten a little bit more, maybe they would have made the playoffs. But... That's another reason, in my opinion, as to why the Flyers team is the playoffs. And the third reason was overworked Ursa. Now, at the very beginning of the season, they had Ursa as the backup to uh, Carter Hart. Hart then was suspended due to the 2018 uh, World Junior stuff, so he left the team, and that basically left Ursa in the starting role. Now, Hart was probably the best goaltender of the five that the Flyers have used this year. Ursa. He had all right numbers. He had under 3 GAA, but did have, I think it was an 890 save percentage, which isn't overly fantastic. But he started 49 games, and I think he's a rookie. Erson, I don't think, has played too many more uh, games beyond this year. So, uh, given that fact, uh, Erson was thrust into the starting role, and as much as he did respectfully, I think they ran him out towards the end of the season. So, that's my opinion of what happened. Uh, they overworked Erson way too much. Their backup goaltenders after Hart left were Pedersen, who did not look overly good. Sandstrom, only gone to a couple of games, also did and look over really good. And Ivan Fedotov, who did get into a couple of NHL games uh, late in the season, uh, but once again, was not an overly great goaltender for the Philadelphia Flyers. So interesting stuff there, but I think that uh, overworking Urson, running him to the ground before the season ended, the scoring problems they had this year, and uh, the collapse in uh, late March, early April were the three main reasons, in my opinion, as to why this Flyers team missed the playoffs. Going over to the pending UFAs, RFAs, and draft capital for this upcoming offseason. If you look at the UFAs, there are only three really significant ones. You have winger Dennis Gariana for two points in 18 games this year at the NHL level. It was mostly an AHL player. And with the Flyers having who they have in the NHL roster right now, I would expect Gary Donoff to probably move on. You also have veteran defenseman Mark Stahl, who had 5 points in 35 games, and Eric Johnson, who had 6 points in 67 games with the Flyers and Sabres combined. I would expect both these guys to probably move on. Stahl's a really good veteran 6-7th uh, D. Same thing with Eric Johnson, but I, I'm not sure if their long-term futures are with Philadelphia. So I would expect probably both those two move on. Maybe one of them comes back, but wouldn't be overly surprised if they both move on. Uh, significant pending our face that this team has. Yeah, Bobby Brink, who had 23 points in 57 games. Not quite good as like a solid middle six winger. And I think if he has a more consistent role next year, Brink could be a really good player. So that's a really good pickup there. And I think he'll resign with the Philadelphia Flyers. You have Igor Zamula, who has 21 points in 66 games. Looked like a pretty good third pair defenseman. So I could definitely see him be brought back for next year. And then you also have Adam Ginning, who had a really good AHL season. Had a goal in nine games at the NHL level. He looks like a pretty good player. And I think he could also challenge for an NHL roster spot next year so I think that he'll be back as well so some interesting players who I think could definitely be brought back next year for Philadelphia Flyers I feel like the current draft capital for this upcoming offseason they have 10 picks for this upcoming draft they have theirs and the Panthers first round picks they have the Jackets second round pick plus an extra pick uh, from uh, the NHL they, they gave to the Philadelphia Flyers in exchange for compensation uh, for J. O'Brien not signing with the Philadelphia Flyers so they're going to have an extra compensation pick uh, in the second round the Flyers also have their third round pick for this draft. They don't have a fourth round pick, but they do have the Kings and the Knights fifth round pick. There's in the Blues sixth round pick and their own seventh round pick. So they have a couple of sixths, a couple of fifths, a couple of seconds, a couple of firsts. They also have their own third and their own seventh. However, they don't have any fourth round picks this year for the draft capital. So some interesting stuff there, but I definitely think the Flyers have a really good draft capital for this year. And they'll be able to make a lot of moves, whether that's drafting players for the future and continuing to get this team younger, or whether that's training them to continue to add pieces uh, so that it can help them win. And lastly, going over to 
with five ways they can see the Flyers team improving in the offseason to get back to the playoffs next year. Uh, first, they need to figure out who the tandem is with Urson. Urson, I think, is fantastic goal center, but with Hart being a part of that 22 year old junior team, he's not going to be back next year. So, in my opinion, being able to uh, figure out who they need to have with Urson is going to be a big uh, thing there for the Flyers. Could he bring back Ivan Fedotov, who looked decent in this couple of NHL appearances? I think it's possible, but he's UFA. He may want to go and try somewhere else to try and get a goal setting job, so we'll have to wait and see on Fedotov. Uh, but maybe he's the guy who they brought back. Uh, did they bring back Sandstrom? He really didn't do overly well at the NHL level. I think Sandstrom is more suited to be a third stringer than a backup, in my opinion. So I don't think that's the option. So they may go out and try and add someone. I mean, I could definitely see him going. I don't think they'll go after a starter. I think Urson's a long term starter. So I don't think they'll trade a whole bunch of assets to go after guys like Gibson or Markstrom or Allmark. I don't see him doing that. But I could see him go after a little bit of depth pieces, like maybe in free agency, going after a guy like Capo Kakunin or a DeSmith or Comrie or Brossois or someone who can at least work in a tandem with Urson, where Urson can start like 40 to 50 games and someone else can start 30 to 40 instead of Urson having to start 50 to 60 games and someone else starting between 20 and 30. So it'll be interesting to see exactly who to try and go after, but I think if they are able to get a tandem goaltender for Urson, who's a little bit better as a uh, 1B goaltender than a guy like Fedotov or Sandstrom, who are a little more unproven at the NHL level, I think that'll be a really good move there for Fires. Uh, second, extend Konechny. He's worked out fantastically this year. One of the leaders in the school scoring department for Flyers this year uh, look fantastic plays that sort of flyer style hockey they really do like this guy and I think they may have wanted to trade him originally when the season started but after this year I think he really is a heart and soul player of this Flyers team and I do think he will be uh, staying with the Flyers so I'm not sure what the contract will be my guess will be like a six to eight year deal with the AAV of around maybe six and a half to seven and a half million dollars would be my guess I'd be surprised if it was over seven and a half million dollars but I think Konechny does will get extended and will remain with the Philadelphia Flyers so I'll have to wait and see on that uh, I think they have to consider moving a couple of guys including Johansson, Atkinson, and Lawton those three fours I think could all be move. Johansson's going to mention the final year of his deal. I also wouldn't be even surprised that the Flyers tried to buy out Ryan Johansson. He has not worked out overly well at the NHL level over the past little while, so I definitely don't expect Johansson to be back with the Flyers next year. Atkinson was also scratched a couple of times this year, and I could see him potentially be moved by the Flyers to get mentioned the final year of his deal. He hasn't worked out overly well in Philadelphia, so given the fact he's entering the final year of his deal, I could definitely see him be moved. And there was also a lot of talk at the trade deadline that Lawton could definitely be moved for the right price. He's a really good middle six player who can play center or wing, so he's very versatile forward, so I definitely think there's very likely a chance Long could be moved as well. So, not sure exactly who will be moved, who will be traded, who could be potentially bought out, but I'll expect Lawton, Atkinson, and Johansson all to be moved in the offseason for Phil Fair Flyers. Uh, I expect them to get younger. They need to do this this year. They did not do overly well. I mean, they did get some guys like Forrester, like Samuel Ante, and NHL Action, Brink, so that was really good, but I think they need to continue to get even younger. I mean, Urson's a really good goaltender in net. If they can get guys like Jinning and Atard in the NHL next year, that'll be really good. Maybe even have Bonk play a little bit in the NHL. Uh, if you look at the four group, maybe have a guy like Denver Bark again to the NHL. There's a couple of other decent uh, young players in Philadelphia. Don't think Mitch Cobb's ready for the NHL yet, uh, but I do think eventually he will be another young piece that needs to be added to our roster. So we'll have to wait and see exactly what happens there, but getting younger is going to be a huge piece to the Flyers. And lastly, I think they need to add one to two top nine forwards. Uh, they have a lot of really good forwards on this team already. But I think if they move a couple of guys like Atkinson, Johansson, free up some cow space, they could soon try and go after one to two more top nine forwards who can definitely work in that top nine. Uh, maybe some younger forwards who can work with them while they do this rebuild. So we'll have to wait and see exactly what happens there. But I really do think adding guys like Perron or Fogel or Olofsson or LeBanc could be a really good fit there for the uh, Philadelphia Flyers to try and improve this team. So we'll have to wait and see exactly what happens there. But those are three reasons, in my opinion, why the Flyers team is the playoffs. Those are the UFA, RFA, and draft capital for Flyers for this upcoming offseason. And those are the five ways I can see them improving the offseason to try and get back to the playoffs for next year. So I was going to see what happens there. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on all this down in the comment section below. What do you think about the Flyers and Blues? Uh, do you agree with me that those are three reasons why this, those two teams this is the playoffs? Uh, what are your thoughts about their pending EO phase, our phase, and draft capital for this upcoming offseason? And what do you think they're going to do in the offseason to improve and get back to the playoffs? Definitely love to hear your thoughts on all of that down in the comment section below. So I'm going to talk about for today. Or to like this video. And if you'd like to subscribe down below. Thank you for your support and your with all of you guys. So if you haven't already, don't forget to leave a comment down in the comment section below. Also a blog talking about news, rumors, analysis, stuff like that. So check that out. We'll link in the description below. And can't wait to see you guys all for next video. See you guys soon.